What's up everybody, welcome to Money Management channel. My name is Andrei and today I'm gonna be doing an update on MMTLP and FINA saga. And for today's video I have uh, several news, the most important and the latest ones. Uh, first of all, I want to start with the preliminary results of uh, Don Fis trip uh, to District Columbia. Then I will show you an update uh, from uh, Dennis Neal about uh, his uh, podcast and about his uh, two special guests uh, who explained uh, the current situation in regards to MLTLP saga. On top of that, I will show you a letter from a Congress member. And this letter is not so impressive. And uh, on top of that, I will show you some update in regards uh, to the Chinese news uh, about uh, the naked short uh, ban and uh, I will uh, give you my two cents again about the transferring your shares to ST. So, and before we dive deep into all of this, guys, please hit the like button for YouTube algorithm. It is the easiest way how we can push this case uh, forward to the broader audience and eventually it will help us to win this battle. So, let's start with this news. We are on mmtlpresources.com and let me quote to this article uh, the most recent one uh, that was uh, written just several hours ago. Taking DC by storm, Don Fees. And let me quote to further. There are many hard-working individuals in the MGLP community, and we appreciate them all. But we want to give a huge shout-out to Richie Don Fees for all of his uh, DC appointments. Richie has been taking DC by storm in the last two weeks, with countless uh, appointments uh, set by himself and the members of uh, the community. Over the last few days, dozens of photos of Richie with uh, reps gives hope uh, to the MMTLP community that Congress uh, is truly getting in. And here you can see uh, the set of uh, these uh, pictures, and I have to say that uh, Don Fis is consistently posting these uh, pictures and uh, I think uh, he has uh, huge results because uh, he also uh, tried to add more people to this uh, list. Uh, let me show you the list of uh, the Congress members who signed a letter, open bipartisan letter that was uh, prepared by the Ralph Norman's office on, and that was disclosed on December 22nd. And uh, on December 22nd, we had 74 signatures under this letter. And uh, according to Junk Savis' uh, tweet uh, that she published uh, at the very end of last year, at that moment, it was about 89 Congress members who signed this letter. And I think for now, with uh, the latest efforts of Don Fis, we have uh, at least more than 90 people, 90 Congress members who signed it, and potentially we broke even a 100 uh, signatures to the moment. So, in my opinion, it is uh, very important. But at the same time, I want to pay your attention uh, to this uh, tweet that was reposted by Mark Basile, and that was originally uh, written by uh, Wendell Roy. He wrote, RMTLP, after reading this email from uh, one hallway below, I unfortunately can't say I am the least bit surprised. Congress has not worked on behalf of the American people in quite some time. This system is broken, instead of uh, continuing down a path that is not yielding results. And uh, here is uh, this letter, let me quote you just a couple of uh, sentences. While FINRA acted to protect investors from short sellers, their decision to halt trading had adverse effects uh, on pre-existing shareholders who saw their portfolios plummet. Regrettably, there is no action for Congress to take at this time to help uh, good faith investors recover their assets in this instance. Are you sure? Congress doesn't have uh, any power to force uh, these wrongdoers uh, to solve this problem? Guys, are you kidding me? It is not the case. We definitely know that Congress uh, has the power to solve this problem immediately. And uh, that is why Don Fis uh, is uh, working hard uh, in order to uh, have uh, these uh, signatures under the bipartisan open letter. And uh, we are working together in order to uh, make it happen. So, let me show you the next news that is also quite important in my opinion. Let me show you the title. Second podcast from Neil features Burda and Syntax. Dennis Neil is back with his uh, What's Bugging Me podcast and another episode featuring MMTLP. Thanks to Dennis for continuing to explore the MMTLP saga. 
The latest episode is over an hour and features comments from Syntax and the full 45-minute interview with John Burda. The podcast is available on Ricochet and Apple Podcasts. And here is the tweet uh, from uh, Dennis Neal. And by the way, guys, uh, I have to admit that uh, there is a lot of people who try to accuse uh, John Burda because uh, he sold uh, some of his uh, shares uh, uh, back uh, in 2022. And I have to say that it is uh, not the best decision for him, but uh, it was uh, up to him to decide when he can or cannot sell his shares because it is his assets and uh, he is free to do anything with it. On top of that, guys, a lot of people said that John Burda, while he was selling his shares, he said that uh, he hold his position strong. And yes, it is also a fact, but uh, on the other hand, I have to admit that uh, uh, he sold uh, about 10% of his entire stake for more of more than 2 million shares. And guys, pumpers didn't do like this. They sell the entire number of his uh, of her shares at the very top of uh, their pumping activity. And John uh, definitely it is not the person who tried uh, to scam MMTLP community because he is also an MMTLP community member and he holds a quite substantial number of shares. On top of that, he paid uh, out of his own pocket uh, to Wes Christian and he made uh, a separate company, Flamethrower. Unfortunately, we don't know any results from uh, this company and from Wes Christian efforts, but in general, I have to admit that I don't believe that John Burda is... Uh, a wrongdoer in our case. So I have to say that uh, we have uh, a lot of tweets uh, from uh, John Burda and uh, from other community members uh, about uh, this interview, a lot of uh, excited tweets. And I have to say that uh, I didn't uh, see it uh, yet, uh, but uh, I saw several sneak peeks that was published by Dennis Neal somewhere here. And uh, I think uh, in this interview, John explained again his position and uh, he explained the current situation of MMTLP saga. So let me show you that uh, we still have uh, some people who are trying to... Uh, accused John of uh, not uh, only the selling of uh, his shares while he admitted uh, a completely opposite, but uh, uh, some of uh, people want uh, to know more about his activity even before the TRCH uh, company, even before the Torchlight Energy. And, uh, for example, Trade Zero found uh, some details about uh, the lawsuits against John Burda, and based on these lawsuits, uh, he made the conclusion that John Burda is a wrongdoer. Guys, it is not the case. Uh, we know that uh, there is a lot of people who are trying to sue other people. They are basically, uh, we have a lot of patent trolls. We have a lot of uh, uh, law trolls who are trying to sue other quite famous uh, and wealthy people in order to grab their money. And uh, we don't know all the conditions, we don't know all the circumstances of these lawsuits. That is why it is too premature to uh, say that John Burda is a wrongdoer. So, let me show you further update. Uh, John Burda uh, reminded uh, that uh, we have uh, the problem of naked shorting at the very high level. He reposted the tweet that was written on January 18 by a naked short hunter and uh, he wrote this is one of the best explanations on how counterfeit shares are created when you look at the uh, GTI and finger and the SEC does nothing to enforce uh, the law against it. Do you now see what is happening in Secret Service? This happens daily. Can you help investigate this crime? And uh, this is the uh, two minute long video of uh, this person who worked for one of uh, the biggest uh, bank uh, and he explained uh, his work, uh, how he counterfeited the shares of uh, US companies. And this problem is really huge. And let me show you how this problem is uh, solving in the entire world. We have another mention uh, that uh, the next country is trying to block uh, this naked shorting activity. Unusual Wells wrote this tweet three hours ago. Breaking. China's largest uh, brokerage, uh, Citic Securities, has suspended short selling for some clients, per Bloomberg. 
And uh, it is not uh, the decision uh, from uh, the state level, from the government level, but uh, it is a very good uh, indication that uh, uh, some, at least some brokerages try to solve this problem. And it is another country, and it is quite surprising for me, but uh, this country is uh, China with its uh, Communist Party, and uh, they are trying to solve it. Not from the CCP standpoint, but from the brokerage uh, point of view. And in my opinion, it is a huge. So, uh, the last but not the least, I still have a lot of requests. Uh, I still have a lot of questions from MMTLP community members about uh, the transfer shares to ST. A lot of people don't want to do uh, with the, uh, their shares. And uh, guys, uh, uh, if I were you, and uh, you know that I am not an MMTLP shareholder, I do these videos uh, in order to help uh, uh, MMTLP community and in order to help the entire retail community to uh, have a fair market. That is why I am here and I will continue to do it. And guys, if I were you, if I had uh, uh, any shares of MMTLP, I would transfer them to ST. Because you will not lose anything. You will uh, have an opportunity, you will be eligible for additional dividends. And if you read this statement that uh, was published on July 26, 2023, uh, you will uh, know that uh, it will be a new company. For now, it uh, it is a new co, so-called new co, which uh, will have an additional dividends uh, from uh, Greg McCabe. He is the largest shareholder and chairman of NextBridge Board of Directors. And the main purpose of uh, this transfer is uh, to uh, know the share count, because it is one of the ways how we can find it out. On top of that, guys, uh, the main downside of this transfer uh, uh, might uh, appear only if uh, you don't have a lot of shares and your broker dealer want to charge you a fee for this transfer. Because if you own, for example, 100 shares and the charging fee is, uh, let's say, $200, it doesn't make sense from the financial standpoint to transfer your shares because uh, this uh, transfer fee will uh, destroy quite substantial uh, amount of the value of your shares. So I think uh, that's all information that I want to provide you. If you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel with notification bell. And see you guys and girls next time. Bye. I got the cash in the bag, stadium pack,